Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we are going to do a character guide on Vincent. I know this is one people have been looking for. I do apologize once again, I have been on vacation all week, so I'm cranking out the, the four that came out for DE9. I'm cranking them all out in one night. Um, I'm going to release them. I don't know how far I'm going to spread them apart, but they're probably going to be a little bit more squished together, and I'm going to get edges recorded tonight as well. So uh, character guides will be coming. They will be flowing. So if you don't see it, it doesn't mean I didn't record it. It just means it's coming. I'm spreading out the content on my channel, so I'm not throwing it all out at once. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at Vincent. Um, <clears throat> Vincent, <laughs> we'll put it this way. I got to use Vincent quite a bit uh, doing DE9 runs because it was very, very hard. It was a very difficult fight. Um, Vincent did end up being on my winning team. Um, but through all the trial and error of doing that tough event, I got to use him quite a bit. So I'm pretty familiar with him now. So in this guide, we're going to go ahead. Let's take a look at his fierce, his artifacts, and then I'll kind of just give you the general overview of how he works and how to play him. Um, but Vincent is a very good, very cool character, right? So let's go ahead. Uh, for passives, uh, artifacts are very easy. He's just attack 108, max brave 330. He's one of the older characters. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, some of the older characters in the game, they don't actually have like C50 passives in their artifacts. And so typically characters that don't have that, they they just get attack 108, max brave 330. So that's why you'll see some of my recommendations will have a C50 and some won't. But usually if a character has a good C50 two star, then that's what you put on there, right? Okay. Um, and then for spheres, there are a few ways you can go with the spheres here. A slot is very standard. Uh, he, he's more of a damage dealing character. Um, he's mainly a damage dealer and debuffer. Debuffing is actually the main thing that he does, but his damage is actually quite good after his C90. And then Global, we actually got his LD early, but he was a little underwhelming at the time because he didn't get LD boards right away. So um, that was kind of a whole issue. People complained about it. He was a little underwhelming. He was still, he was still good. But he wasn't like anniversary good, right? And then they turn around and did Garnet, and then it's like, yeah, that's anniversary good, right? So they kind of learn from that mistake of, uh, because if you guys think of, for those of you who have been playing for a little bit, you guys know the difference between Garnet compared to Balthier and Vincent, right? Completely different story, uh, completely different levels of power creep. So yeah, Garnet was a crazy good anniversary unit. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at the spheres here. So A slot. Being that he's primarily a, a damage dealer slash debuffer, uh, for damage you want to go with brave damage and attack. And anytime a character can do weakness damage, which Vincent does do weakness damage, I always like Rydia. Rydia to me is a really good shout. Um, Jack is also very good because he's also a brave damage attack. So like I kind of like those combos. Or you could just do any like solid attack spheres you have or brave damage spheres. Um, Vincent does do range damage, so you could put a range damage sphere on him as well. But look through your box of your massive box of A spheres, because it's the most common sphere in the game. Um, just try to find your best sphere that you want to use on Vincent that's going to give you attack or brave damage. That's really what you're looking at there. All right. Now, E slot is kind of interesting um, because Vincent already does some very potent debuffs. But combining with spheres, you can actually like enhance those debuffs even more. So a really common thing people like to do. So Vincent within his kit already does like straight up 80% attack down. So a common strategy is to put Pain Sphere on. So I, I did go ahead and throw Pain Sphere because Pain actually might be the best sphere you can give Vincent, like hands down. Because one is it synergizes really well with his kit. But it's also a weakness damage sphere, which Vincent can also do. So this sphere was almost made for Vincent in a way. So I just talked about this in the realm video, but it is a, uh, in the realm video, uh, it raises party attack, but then also lowers enemies attack by 10%. And it stacks with his current attack down debuff, which naturally in his kit is an 80% down. So you combine it with the pain spear for a massive 90% down, which is pretty crazy, right? So I had to put this, I had this full pain spear. Nobody was using it. I had to put it on him, right? Now, this other slot, um, <clears throat> for me, I had already put Vincent's on him a long time ago, um, back when I first like maxed out his EX. And his is another 30% attack down. So this, to me, is overkill um, with having pain and this on here. So realistically, in this slot, I wouldn't put another Vincent on there. Um, I would maybe do something like uh, an attack sphere like a Seymour Irvine Yuffie or if you want to like go with a speed down or something different to give them more debuffs um, you totally could do that the only reason I didn't take mine off is I don't have a slot remover so I'll just leave it I'll just have massive ridiculous attack down part of what makes Vincent so good is his debuffs are actually quite crippling 
as long as the the bosses aren't like getting rid of them too often and you can keep those on like it's very common you'll be in a lufenia plus and the bosses will literally hit you for ones because their attack is so debuffed that they just can't do anything especially if you have like combo that with like brave damage reduction or something like that on your party um you can get some pretty like there are it, it really depends on your play style but there are people that love debuff stacking like team comps so you could pair him with other debuffers and just stack some nasty debuffs down and really shut down your opponent and that's definitely a strategy for a way to play the game right so yeah i would say pain sphere is for sure best uh, i like Rydia in the a slot a lot like those two i feel really really good about and then that second e slot i would say is really open and kind of up to what you want to do if you want to go ahead and do like a yuffie um and give yourself a little bit of attack you could do something like that or if you want to go you know seymour irvine irvine's good because it's range damage um, Emperor, like those are good, like attack ones. Otherwise, yeah, just take your debuff of choice, throw it on there if you want to add more debuffs to Vincent or stack with buffs he's already doing, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into the showcase, and we're actually going to talk about what this bad boy does. So, um, I've got my team comp set up, so let's go and hop ahead and hop in. Um, we're going to go on Irvine's intersecting wheel. Uh, we're not going to have any issue here because Vincent is range damage, and we're also bringing Cisnay for extra range damage, so this sphere won't be an issue at all. Now, Vincent was really big for DE9. They pushed him pretty hard there. Um, so as I talked about before, <coughs> Vincent's main gimmick is debuffing. And one of the orb conditions in there was applying, I think, four or more debuffs in a turn. <coughs> the other thing that Vincent does, that the reason why his BT is actually pretty darn good, is that his BT literally makes it so that the bosses cannot buff themselves. And of course, they theme that DE9 fight around the bosses putting on crazy buffs and ticking the orb by like 10 or something ridiculous when they do a buff it's just crazy so you really needed one strategy was just using vincent to shut that down there are other ways around it um but they were pushing vincent pretty hard there right all right so let's go ahead and look at his kit so the way i recommend you open a fight with vincent is he ha you have to open with his ld so he's actually one of the few characters most characters these days they actually start with their ld buff on but vincent does not so you do want to open up with that so we're going to open up with the LD here. What this does is that you can see it just gave him 12 turns of his overhead buff. Um, so what this LD is going to do, it gives him the overhead buff, which is really powerful. It actually, it's what makes him a decent damage dealer because without that LD overhead, his damage is actually pretty poor. But with it, it's actually really good. He's doing like, so I don't even have my green. I could put like an ultimate weapon. So mine's definitely not a fully max out Vincent. But in DE9, my Vincent was very commonly on any button he pressed doing like 700k with splash, which is actually really good damage considering what else he's doing for the team, right? Um, let's go ahead and just do a free battery here with Rem. There we go. And Vincent's going to come up again anyway, so we'll just throw down a Rem LD, do some a little bit of extra damage here, sure. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, Vincent's damage with the LD is very good. So I recommend you get that up and you want to keep that overhead active the whole time. The moment that overhead falls off, his damage is going to go down immensely. And you guys will see this. Um, now you're going to get a free skill use after that. Um, you're going to get a free skill use after the LD. Or no, this free skill use actually is from Rem. Because <laughs> she used her LD. But Vincent does get a free skill use after the EX. When you do get a free skill use, if you're not going to run out of skills during the fight then I would use the AA. But DE9, like Vincent was running out of skills. So if it's really hard content, it's going to be a long fight. You actually might want to use the 15 or 35. Um, but for the showcase, we'll use the AA. <clears throat> what the AA does is while he has that AA um, active ability on, any debuffs he puts on actually gets an extra two turns added onto it. So it's really good for extending the debuffs, right? Now his 15 and 35 are very similar. They just do different things. So the reason Vincent has weakness damage is a combination of a fire and lightning elemental. So his uh, 15 is fire element, his uh, 35 is lightning element. Now what each of these attacks do is they do imperil for their element and then they apply different debuffs. Now the LD actually imperiled uh, fire and lightning right away. So that's the other reason you start with the LD is because you imperil both right away and you're already doing weakness damage, right? And then what happens is Deadly Beast Flare, which is the 15, that's going to come with a very strong Eye Brave Down. And then the 35 Livewire Shard, 
live wire shot has the really strong attack down. So if you want to open with attack down, do live wire shot. If you want to do eye brave down, do deadly beast flare. So I'm going to open with that. And you can see his LD overhead gives him this really strong follow-up. So there you go. That was 820k with splash. Like that's top tier damage dealer damage, right? And he's got all the debuffs on top of it, which are going to cripple the enemies down. Let's see what kind of brave damage we take here. Yeah, there that was pretty low brave damage. That was only like in the 2000s because they have a really strong attack down on right now. Um, let's go ahead and just do an attack here with Cisne just to get it going through. That's fine. Get the big follow-up, sure. Yeah, we, we did so much range damage, we already canceled the orb. I mean, we have a really range-heavy team here, right? Okay, um, and then Ram... Uh, sure, let's just... I guess we'll swap into Vincent, that's fine. Okay, so that was the 35 attack. And then the 15 attack, same thing. And you can see that they both do uh, AoE Brave Shaving. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, and once again, with that LD follow-up, actually pretty potent damage. Yeah, 830k was... I mean, between the two enemies, he did like about a mil damage, which is really good, like just with his 15 and 35. So if you bring out a damage dealer and you say, yeah, they're 15 and 35 are each doing like a mil damage, like that's a lot of damage. So if you're someone that's newer, you could pick up Vincent and Vincent could be your primary da damage dealer for now. Um, as we get into Shinryu, that damage might not hold up as well. But right now, he's definitely a potent enough damage dealer, bringing a lot of really good debuffs. Um, I think the one bad thing about Vincent is that bosses can lock out debuffs or be very debuff immune. If bosses are very debuff immune, then you like if you're bringing Vincent just for damage and you're not getting the debuffing, then I don't think it's worth it. Then I would rather just bring like Prish, right? Because Prish's damage is ridiculous. Um, so if long, as long as enemies can be debuffed, Vincent is a very strong option. He's also, you know, which was pushed in DE9, but he's also very good in situations where bosses have very powerful buffs and you want to stop them from buffing themselves. That is also quite potent and powerful as well, right? Since I've got Vincent up right now... Oh, he got petrified. I didn't even realize that. Okay. Um, What we'll do is on Vincent's next turn, we'll just go into BT phase so we can show that off. One thing I will say about Vincent is his uh, BT animation is pretty fire. <laughs> Not going to lie. Um, his transformation, I actually wish that was a costume. Wait, Vincent got... Oh, he's paralyzed for three turns. What? How are my characters getting paralyzed? I've never gotten paralyzed on this fight. What is going on? Okay, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into summon phase. Boy, these guys are wanting to give me the business today. Okay. We're going to do this, and then we're just going to basically fight through till this paralyze is all gone. And then I'm going to use Vincent's burst phase and get back into business. These guys just did not want to make this uh, this showcase very friendly here. That's fine. We'll move forward with it. It's, it's pretty basic here. But Vincent's paralyzed should drop off. Okay, now we're good. Now we're back in business. So let's go and swap back into Vincent. And then we can just show off some more attacks. And then he'll get an attack right after. I mean, this the bosses will pretty much be dead by the time I get into his burst phase. But that's fine. But he's very simple, right? So 15 of 35, like I said, big important debuffs. They do, they enchant and peril for his elements, lightning and fire. The LD does both, so you will get it with the LD. The main thing with Vincent is you're just upkeeping that overhead. You really want to make sure that doesn't fall off because you want to be doing the damage. Now let's go ahead and show off the EX. So Nightmare Shot here. This will give him a free skill use after you use it. And then it does have a really important Nightmare debuff. This Nightmare debuff has a huge defense down. It's got a sap effect on it. And it's got a Brave damage up and an HP damage up attached to it. So it packs all that into one debuff. Which is very efficient because then you don't like use up all of your spaces. So for the amount of spaces Vincent is using up, he's actually pretty efficient. Um, this is one of the things I liked about Fran. Like Fran packs a ton of debuffs into one actual frame debuff, and you're getting a lot out of it, and it's stackable with other debuffs. So Fran actually could be a really decent partner with Vincent if you want to do like the real huge like debuffing to your enemies and crippling them. Um, that wouldn't be the worst idea. Plus... Fran synergize as well because she also does range damage weakness, which Vincent is also range damage. 
I guess it doesn't matter because he's already got weakness damage from his elements, but that's still kind of a cool thing. They're both range damage. Um, they both carry a lot of debuffs kind of packed in the small packages. So that's kind of nice there, right? So once again, I did the EX. Now I've got the free skill use. So if once again, if it's a fight where you know you're not going to run out of skills, I would use the AA because once again, it's going to expand how long your debuffs are lasting. Um, otherwise, if it's going to be like DE9 and you know you're in for a long slog of a fight, then you go ahead and use it on a 15 or 35. Um, the HP attack and Brave attack really aren't worth using. The only thing is, is like, if you think you're going to run out of skills, the HP attack isn't the worst thing to press. It's very weak damage initially, but if you're getting the LD follow-up, it actually becomes decent damage, right? That's totally what does it. So something you could do with Vincent is what I've got set up here. Um, I've got a Fran call. So you could go ahead and bust off a Fran call with Vincent if you don't want to run Fran in the party. Because I think most people would say Fran isn't like the best like in party, which I would agree with. But there I've got the Fran call. The Fran call is packing a lot into it, right? So if we go to the Fran, the Vieira's Punishment, it's lowering like every stat, speed and uh, range resistance. So like <laughs> it just does everything. And then that's going to build up. Now I could go into burst phase with Vincent here. With all of his debuffs and the Vera's Punishment on, it's not a bad setup. Um, if the enemies get another turn, we could see them attack. But like the Eye Brave down, for people that don't understand how the Eye Brave works, Eye Brave basically affects your Brave gain. So when bosses try to gain Brave, like literally if their Eye Brave is debuffed enough, they just won't even gain Brave at all. And they'll try to HP attack you for like zero damage, which can be quite interesting, right? So we'll just go through the burst phase. We'll see all the attacks again here. Uh, we got the LD. Here's the EX. Um, in burst phase, it is important that you use the EX before the 15 and 35 because now I'm going to get a free skill use of the 15 and 35. If you use the 15 and 35 first, they're going to fall off and you won't have them. So now I can do a 15 or 35. So let's do a Deadly Beast Flare. And once again, with all the follow-ups, the damage is actually quite disgusting. <laughs> it's pretty good damage. Not to mention we got Cisne doing her thing with Vincent here. Um, and then now I can just use the 15 and 35 normally. And just deal a bunch of damage. And then get ready for this just this really fire BT attack here. The more I use Vincent, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I kind of have a regret in this event. And that is um so I came into this, my Sephiroth was already blue, and I didn't realize I'd actually invested blue into him because I wasn't planning to green Sephiroth, but I, I used him not green, and his damage was actually quite insane. I, I was actually really like he's doing over a mil with his Octa Slash. And I'm like, well, since I blew him, I guess I'll green him. But after using Vincent a lot, kind of wish I had green Vincent because he's actually really good too. Um, look at that. Look at that outfit though. If they had that as a costume, I'd buy that in a second. That Vincent costume is fire. I'm not going to lie. Like the, the Turk one doesn't excite me at all. I actually like Vincent's like regular outfit more than the Turk's one. I feel like the Turk one, he just gets more boring, right? He's just got a suit on and a haircut. He's just like Reno and um, what's his face? Reno and the other guy, the bald guy, I can't think of his name, but I really like him. Um, but the Turks, like, they all look the same. And actually, Cisne's a Turk, so it, it actually makes sense I ran her in here as well, right? All the Turks with their suits. Um, but, I, yeah, I'm just not... If you like the Turks, though, and, like, want to have them, like, all on a team in their suits, I could definitely see people, like, get into that for sure. I'm um, sure we'll just do a cure. I don't know why I did that, because I'm just going to kill this guy before he gets a turn. Um, all right, let's go ahead and swap the Vincent. And we'll get one more attack in. And then, yeah, the boss is pretty much toast. Actually, he might die here. No, I don't think that'll kill him. Okay. So, yeah, that's basically Vincent. So, the rundown again, just to refresh you. Um, definitely open with the LD, right? Keep that LD overhead up, which is nice that's an overhead. So, it's really easy to see that you got it. Um, and then, basically, you're bouncing between your 15 and 35 as needed. Um, use the AA on the free turns if you've got enough skill uses. If not, use your free turns on the 15 or 35. So that's basically it. Vincent, good damage, ridiculous debuffs. Uh, the burst effect, which um, we had there, we didn't really see it in play, but had the bosses tried to buff, they just wouldn't get anything. So anyways, guys, there you go. That's Vincent. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions about Vincent, um, let me know. Thanks for watching. Oh, also, by the way, in the description, I do have a Discord. So if you want to hop into my Discord, ask questions about Defo, it is also for Dokkan Battle. So if you play both games, it's a really fun Discord to be in because you can get Defo and Dokkan all in one place. So feel free to check that out. Thanks for watching my character guides. I uh, will catch you all in the next one.